Hello! In this video, I'll demonstrate a compact 3S battery management system that's compatible with 18650 lithium-ion cells. I'll show you how to charge these cells using the BMS, and then we'll test its performance by subjecting it to a 2 ampere load. When designing a battery-powered project, it's often necessary to create a battery system that can reliably power your project while in the field. If you're using rechargeable batteries such as 18650 lithium-ion cells, you'll need a BMS aka battery management system to protect the cells from overcharging, overdischarging, and to ensure that their voltages remain balanced. For this video, I will be using this battery management system designed for use with three lithium-ion cells in series. It comes with three input connections which are B-, B-1, B-2 and B+, while the output is a simple two-pin connection for load and the charger. These four MOSFETs on the PCB are there to allow high current depending on their specification and a controller IC which provides the necessary protection functions we discussed before. The rest of the components are just the complementary components for the controller IC and the MOSFETs. For connecting the cells to the BMS, I will use these cell holders for easy testing. So let's first place the cell holders in series fashion and start its soldering process with the BMS. Now that our BMS is ready, it's time to charge it. Here I will be using a DC to DC buck boost converter module to provide it a constant voltage constant current to charge the lithium ion cells. The beauty of BMS is that it can take a range of input voltage while providing the right amount of output voltage to the individual cell, but it cannot control the charging current. That is why we need to restrict the output current like shown in this video. From the datasheet of the controller I see we can verify that this BMS is not capable of balancing the cells and they can easily differ in their voltage potential. This limitation can lead to issues such as undercharging of some cells, overcharging of others, and quick depletion of weak cells due to the load, resulting in the BMS shutting off. It is always recommended to charge these cells 0.5C or 1C capacity which is also written in the datasheet of lithium-ion cells. Since this BMS is not capable of providing the cell balancing feature, we can verify it by checking the individual cell voltages. Here, cell 3 is at a lower voltage potential as compared to cell 1 and cell 2. After approximately 1 hour, the first two cells have been charged almost fully by the BMS, but the third cell still requires additional charging to reach its fully charged state. Now here comes the problem, the BMS will shut down the charging process because it will detect two fully charged cells and we will be left with one cell not completely charged. This is because this BMS cannot balance the voltage potential difference between the individual cells. 
I have also tested these cells by applying a constant 2 ampere load on them to see how this BMS will function, and as you can see the third cell will now be the first one to cut off the BMS from the load as its voltage will reach the over discharge voltage point. Other than that, the BMS and cells remained at their nominal temperature during the testing process. And finally, you can see that the BMS has now stopped providing any more voltage from the cells and they need to be charged back in order to use them. That is why it is very important to use the right BMS with lithium ion or lithium polymer battery which can provide all the necessary protection features and balancing function. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe my channel for more informative videos.